to the channel. I'm Teresa Perrin. I want to discuss Mullen with you because it's been a while since we've done an update. And guys, I think that we may finally be seeing a reversal. Unfortunately, if you do follow me on Twitter, you saw that I did think they were trying to take this under 50 cents. And when I say unfortunately, I meant unfortunately because I was right. But now guys, on a positive note, I think that we may have found our bottom at 33 cents and be moving into a reversal to the upside. Guys, without further ado, let's get started. Please remember that nothing I say is financial advice and always do your own DD. I want to add in a special side note. And guys, that's that investing in startup EV companies does carry a high degree of risk. With high risk, can come high reward. But you also need to be cautious and know that you should never invest money in any stock that you can't afford to lose. And in particular, in startup EV companies, because there is a high risk, guys, that a lot of these companies will run out of money prior to them completing yeah, you know, their goal to produce many of these vehicles that they intend to. And I'm not saying that that's the case with Mullen. I'm actually very bullish on Mullen. However, it is a possibility that we all need to be aware of. So guys, just keep that in the back of your mind because you need to know that this is a high risk play. But like I said, it's kind of like one of those make it or break it things. I mean, truly they can't really take it down much more, but they can because they can take it to zero, right? If the company goes bankrupt. But on the reverse side of it, guys, the 52 week high is a whole lot of a move up than the 52 week low. So if this does happen to be successful and succeed and continue to grow, Yes, we may face more dilution. However, the reward in the end may be quite grand. And remember that because we're diluting now doesn't mean that if Mullen starts producing these vehicles and bringing in a lot of revenue, that in the future they may actually start to do some share buybacks and increase the value to shareholders. So like I said, this is a play you shouldn't really be in unless A, you're doing a swing trade or B, you plan to hold this for five to 10 years because it's gonna take a while, guys, before you see any significant gains. And it's gonna be a roller coaster on the way up. And remember, like I said, worst case scenario, it can crash completely. Um, I, I don't at this point see that happening, but I need to let you know that it is a risk. So without further ado, let's get started. If you could do me a favor and just smash that like button, it really helps out with the algorithms and gets people aware of Mullen because this sends this video out here, the more likes and comments that I get. So I'd ask, actually like to hear your opinion and thoughts on Mullen going forward in the comments below. That would be great as well. Let's get started, guys. And please remember, I am very bullish on this company, but I do have have to be, you know, wise and tell you the risks as well. All right, so let's start. All right, guys, so Mullen had a move up of 8.96% on Friday, and albeit, you know, 8.96 sounds great, but given the fact that, you know, the share price is ridiculously low, um, that was only a three cent move to the upside. But it was very, very nice to see that breakout. And it continued in the after hours where we moved up another penny um, or 3.60%. So guys, you can see the consolidation forming here. I would like to see this continue to the upside or perhaps even have a day of consolidation because I know it's only three cents, but given the fact that, you know, um, this is trading so cheaply, 8.96% um, is a substantial move for one day. Um, so consolidation prior to the next move up would be great. Or hey, if they wanna bring it up, I just prefer we get that relatively slow, steady move to the upside and not something massive that's gonna result in a crash right back down. Now, the only filing, interestingly enough, that we got or news period on Friday was that, again, David Mitchery sold some of his shares. And guys, he sold 750,000 shares and that was done on the 21st, but again, they took advantage of a day that we happened to be moving to the upside to bring this to everybody's attention. And they did try to pull it back down a little bit, but as you can see, we consolidated and pulled back up. Um, so 
he sold only seven hundred and fifty thousand of his fifteen million eight hundred and forty three thousand seven hundred and eighty nine shares. So substantially, it was a pretty small sell. And guys, I think that David's going to continue to sell from time to time um, and take profits. So that's his right to do as a CEO. It'd be nice to see, um, you know, a little less dilution in this stock. But again, you have to understand he needs to raise money to keep it going. So the value of the shares he sold was only 297,375. And perhaps that's what, you know, brought it even further down earlier in the week, but hard to say. So anyways, let's see what Ortex is showing us. According to Ortex, there is a 17% short interest um, and no shares were borrowed, no shares were returned. And that's why it's not showing a cost to borrow. So it seems like the shorts are getting exhausted. Clearly, why on earth would they continue to short the stock when it's at 30? Well, at the time of this, it was somewhere between 30 something cents and the 41 cents that it closed at, right? So it wouldn't make much sense for them to continue trying to short this guys. If at anything, we would like to see them starting to cover, which I do believe if the market continues to or starts to make a move to the upside, you will see them cover. However, if it continues in this downward spiral or we get any negative news, rest assured, they're probably gonna continue to just short this as low as they can possibly get it, guys, before moving it to the upside. However, as you can see, the utilization in the stock is at 100%. The free float on loan is 31.52% or 128.91 million shares with 1.73 days to cover according to Ortex. Now, as usual, Fintel paints a little bit of a different picture, but I also wanna bring to your attention the fact that the free float on Mullen is actually less than AMC and Ape. It's at 360.28 million. So we know how AMC can move. We know, well, we don't really know yet that Ape can move. We know it can move down, but uh, I think this week we're gonna see it move up. If you haven't already, make sure you watch my video on that. If you wanna make some money this week, I think there's a lot of potential there. Again, nothing's guaranteed in this lovely world of manipulation in this market that we live in. But, you know, if things go like they should, then we should see a move up. Watch the video to find out why. But anyways, uh, going back to Mullen, the 33 week, uh, the 52 week low is 33 cents and the 52 week high is $15.90. So $15 and 90 cents. And guys, on average, we've been getting 75.65 million shares traded, which is kind of crazy considering that every day, just under a fourth of the entire float gets traded, right? That's nuts, that's huge. And on yesterday, or Friday rather, um, yeah, that was yesterday, sorry, long weekend already, um, we traded 161.3 million shares. Guys, that was almost half the entire free float on Friday alone, and the stock only moved a few cents. Something seems kind of funny though, wouldn't you say? I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that, you know, when we're under a dollar, we have those stupid fractional penny prices, which doesn't help us move to the upside, unfortunately. Now, according to what Ortex is telling us, 16.8% of the free float is short. So it's slight, I mean, I'm sorry, according to what Fintel is telling us, 16.8% of the float is sold short and 45.96% has been the dark volume ratio in the dark pool, the volume that's shorted, guys. So according to them, there's only 0 0.70 days to cover, which is significantly less than what Ortex is showing us, but perhaps they're not taking into account the fact that um, the volume on Friday was as huge as it was. I don't know if, if Ortex is considering that or if it hasn't updated with that information yet, but I'm guessing that's why it's showing 0 0.7 on Fintel. And there are 500,000 shares still available for them to short, believe it or not. And the cost to borrow is 8%. And as you can see, crazily enough, the short volume ratio has been a lot lower than it used to be, guys. Anywhere between 28.7 to 
which is slowing down a lot. And I think that's just because the shorts are exhausted. It's time to move this puppy back to the upside, if you ask me. And I, I do think that's coming. There's only so low they can take things, guys. So next week, we have a pretty interesting week, according to Failure to Delivers. And given the fact that, you know, the share count is so so high in the stock, it's not really as significant as it seems, but it's something to be aware of where they only have 300,000 shares available to borrow because we do have 100% utilization. And guys, I know that those that are invested in Mullen, like truly invested, not trading it, like somebody like myself that really is buying and just buying more when I can um, and not trading it, although don't get me wrong, there's no reason why I won't trade this run to the upside separate from my long-term hold position because guys, it's, we need that. We need that to make things run and to move it up um, and I'll be happy to contribute to it. So um, I did buy some more on Friday for that reason. Now, 469,187 failure to deliverers are due on Monday. Tuesday, 677,133. Wednesday is when we have our biggest day of the week with 1,197,171 failure to deliverers due. Thursday is kind of a nothing burger with 702. And Friday is pretty low too with only 156,020. So you can see as it moves up, guys, and this price is getting lower, you can see the exhaustion where they're not borrowing as much. So I think you're going to see as we go moving forward, unless we get a really nice spike, that you're going to see less and less as it starts to move up because I think that they've exhausted their shorts and they're going to let it run a little bit now, guys. Because remember, they can't have it go straight down forever. They're not going to make money on the options or anything else that way. So they have to let this have some runs. And the key, if you're trading this, is to know when it's a run and not to get stuck holding a bag. Now, if you're truly invested in this, as a great deal of my position is, the majority of my position is actually an investment in my long-term portfolio, guys. And that investment, I just keep adding to. And when it dips, it's great because you can add more and bring that dollar cost average down. But that's shares that I'm willing to hold for five to 10 years or until otherwise. And when I say until otherwise, there's two things that would make me sell that position. Number one, I lose faith in the company and decide it's not worth my investment, which at this point, I see great things happening and a lot of growth. So I still believe it's worth my investment. Or number two, we get a massive squeeze to an unrealistic number that I was not expecting it to be at anywhere in the next five to 10 years. And it's worth my while to sell wait the 30 days and buy back in or wait till it drops off to its new low and buy back in. And there's nothing wrong with playing it either of those ways, guys. But if it only moves up a couple dollars, I am not going to even consider that because it's not worth it to me. Now, if it makes a new all-time high or has a massive squeeze one day, that's a whole other story. But I'm not even going to think about that until it comes to that position and I don't see that happening in the near future where it would be at any level where I would consider doing that. That's not to say it's not going to have some nice runs, guys, because I believe it will. But again, that's your trading position. And you know what? That's a great way to be able to add more to your actual position is to also have a position in the stock that you're just trading. Something to think about, but guys, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and thank you so much for watching and let's go mullin'.